Hi boys and girls, this is Mr. Wasserman, and today we are using uh, the metric system uh, to help us understand uh, multiplication a little bit better. Uh, we are learning about mass and uh, the units of grams and kilograms. We are in our home links, Unit 4, Lesson 7, using a measurement scale. Okay, so let's take a look at the top. The first problem is to complete the measurement scale, which is comparing grams to kilograms. Now, the prefix kilo means 1,000. Okay, so if I have a 1,000 grams, that's called a kilogram. Okay, um, so if I have 6 kilograms, that means I would have 6,000 grams. Okay. Or in other words, 6 with three zeros behind it. That's how it would convert. Okay. Now, wait a minute. You said we were going to look at this measurement scale first. Well, I thought I'd get uh, the conversion rate out of the way first before we talk about the scale. So the first measurement listed is 25,000 grams, or 25 with three zeros behind it. So if down here, if 6 kilograms is the equivalent to 6,000, or 6 with three zeros, all I have to do is knock off the three zeros off of this number to get my kilograms, which would be, of course, 25. 25 kilograms is the same as 25,000 grams. And then when I look at my uh, number line on the top half of the scale, it goes 0, 25, 50, 75. So we are skip counting by groups of 25. Okay, so what will come after 75 kilograms? Well, again, down here we have the number 100,000, which is 100 with three zeros behind it. Great way of thinking about this is like coins, okay? How many quarters does it take to get a dollar? Well, if I have four quarters... I have a dollar, which is the equivalent of 100 cents. Okay, so 25, 50, 75, 100. And then, again, to convert kilograms to grams, I'm just going to take that number. I'm just going to add three zeros. It's as simple as that. Now that you have that under your belt, let's take a look at these tables. Okay, so converting... 14 kilograms to grams is, again, as simple as just writing the number and then adding three zeros. Or converting grams to kilograms is taking out the zeros and just writing the whole digit numbers, 27. You could figure out the rest, I'm sure. Okay? So for problem number four, we're going to need a little visual accompaniment in the form of a picture. And this picture happens to be one of my favorite foods, and that is peanut butter. Let me put it off to the side here. Now, if I look at this peanut butter jar, okay, as you can see, along with the uh, calories and the amount of protein that peanut butter offers you, it gives you the weight of the package. Okay, and as you can see, the package is 40 ounces, or 2 pounds, 8 ounces. Now, that's the customary, stubborn old U.S. way of measuring weight. Uh, everybody else in the entire world, the, with the exception of the United States, uses this metric system that we've been talking about. Uh, and in the metric system, this peanut butter jar is 1 kilogram and 13 uh, hundredths of a kilogram, or 1 and 130 grams. Okay, so 1 kilogram, 130 grams. Okay, that's the amount that this jar weighs with the contents. Okay, so for number four, your job is to look around your house and find the mass that's listed in grams or kilograms. Okay. Now, since there are other people in the world other than the United States that eat peanut butter, the makers of Jif will list 
the, in, the ingredients, sometimes in different languages, and of course they will always list the weight in different units, both in uh, ounces or pounds and in grams and kilograms. So for number four, you just have to look around your house, and I would suggest your kitchen, and you just have to list a product or an item that has the weight listed, and then you have to list the amount, 1.13 kilograms, which is the equivalent of 1,130 grams, okay? I'm sure there's a cereal box or a can of green beans somewhere in your pantry that you can look at to find two more items, okay? Uh, and then finally, I'm going to let you do the uh, story problem yourself, which, of course, asks you a question in kilograms but wants the answer in grams. But let's take a look at the uh, multiplication problems. It says practice, and they're two-digit multiplication problems. Now, it doesn't say how to practice. You can either use partitioning rectangles or partial products. I'm going to do one of each. So let's do number 6, 52 times 7. So if I use the partitioning rectangles method, 52 is 50 plus 2. I'm going to multiply both those parts by 7. 50 times 7 is the same as saying 5 times 7 with a 0 behind it, 35 tens or 350. And of course, 7 times 2 is 14. I'm going to add those two amounts together, 350 plus 14, and that gives me a total of 364. That's my product. Now, if I try problem number 7, 99 times 4, using the partial products method, I'm going to write my algorithm vertically. That's just a fancy way of saying I'm going to make my problem go up and down. So then I can then write the parts. 99 is 90. And 9, I'm going to multiply both of those by 4. I like these uh, double uh, numbers because it saves me an extra step. Because if I know what 9 times 4 is, which is 36, I know what 9 tens or 90 times 4 is, it's going to be 360 or 36 tens. And then I just add those two amounts together. 360 plus 36 gives me a total of 396. Okay? So give these problems a try. Convert those amounts between grams and kilograms. Remember when you're doing story problems to look at what unit they're asking for. Uh, but I've got every confidence that you can do this stuff. But hey, if you do have questions, talk to your math teacher. They will be happy to give you the extra guidance that you need. Okay, friends, until we uh, speak again, have a good day. Thanks.